welcome to the channel. My name's Scott Davis, if you don't know me already. And due to the UK lockdown, I haven't been able to get out and shoot lately. So I thought I'd give you free tips towards smoke bomb photography, as it's not something that everyone gets to do. And there are a few things that you do have to consider when doing it. So here are three tips to help you out. Tip number one is the wind. May seem like a no brainer, but the wind can affect the results of your images quite dramatically. And there are some things you need to take into consideration. Number one is the direction of the wind. If the wind is blowing towards you as the photographer, you will find the smoke comes straight towards you and will completely cover your frame when actually shooting your photos, which also means that you're just gonna end up with a big cloud of pink or blue smoke, depending on the color you choose, which is what nobody wants. Number two is the speed of the wind you'll find even the smallest amount of wind can make a biggest difference. If the wind is too quick, you'll find that the smoke will disperse and your clouds will be very, very thin and light. And you will find with some smoke grenades, it will lose all color completely. And then you end up with more of a white color instead of a bright, vibrant color that you may be looking for. Tip number two, focus points. I never even thought about the focusing when it comes to shooting smoke grenades but I've recently moved on to a mirrorless camera and it can be an issue. For those still shooting on the old style of digital SLRs, it's not so difficult. You can just set your single focus point and you'll find that most of the time the camera does aim where you want it to go. But with the mirrorless side of things coming in now and a lot of face detects, the eye detects, the animal detects, you'll find that your focus tends to hunt quite a lot. So it may be worth switching over to either a singular point focus or an area point focus because that lens will be hunting the whole time the smoke grenade is going off and you don't want to miss the shot when it comes up. Tip number three, model movement. Smoke bombs do take a little bit of practice and if your model's never worked with smoke bombs before, they do have to be quite active in the sense that they are constantly moving maybe forwards to step out of the smoke, waving their arms around to get some smoke to either bloom below them, around them, and building up in thickness. So they're gonna to have to be quite active more than usual. I'm not saying Olympic runner active, but they are gonna to need to get used to moving around. The best bit of advice that I can give for this is have your model wave the smoke around, maybe below them a little bit. When the smoke builds up a little bit too much, step forwards and out of the smoke as you step back as the photographer and keep repeating it. That way you should get a nice build up as well as the smoke's not going in the model's face all the time. And one last bonus tip. I thought I had to throw this in there. If you can afford it, try to buy some extra smoke grenades. No matter what you think, you can never have enough. Also, if you have the chance, give the model one before the shoot or while you're setting your gear up so she can trial it, see what it feels like, move it around. Gives you a chance to see what the wind direction is again. And it'll also get them used to actually handling it as well because they do get warm in the hand and some people might be scared of them, as well as it allows the model to see how the smoke reacts as well. I hope you enjoyed this gift of knowledge. Um, it's not usually my kind of thing that I normally do, so I hope you like it. If you do, give us a thumbs up. Uh, maybe even subscribe if you haven't already and if there's anything you want to know please leave me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.